Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are playing Hearthstone. Today is April 9th, and we're streaming and recording and breaking it all up for later. We need to get some Paladin and Priest victories going on here, so let's do this. Hmm. So, Paladin and Priest, Paladin and Priest, let's play this one. And try to get some ranked wild here. One of the commenters up for showcasing. Um, showcasing decks. Like, on that issue, it's like, I'm cool with, with playing a few things. Like, maybe one, one or two games per person at the end but let's let's remember this stream is going longer and longer every second and I, I gotta get the the quest done first so if you're still around and you want to showcase some things I'll um, I'll send you a friend request since uh, you you particularly are already on my friend thing so we'll I'll send you a friendly challenge a friend request at at the end of this stream. Um, right now we have a lot of news still I haven't covered. We we went through most of what is a huge dr amount of drama with the G two A uh, stuff going on. Should I play this? I don't think I should play it right now. Reporting for duty. Um, Bioware, that is the other thing, is basically just doing an apology tour, uh, as far as, uh, putting in a patch that fixes a, several things, and then adding a little bit more to all of that. See, I don't want to play this right now. Mm. This is a weird choice of events. Oh, I didn't even attack. Man, I'm not paying enough attention. So, I think Bioware in particular, if I'm just going to offer an opinion, uh, is um, Trust me. particularly digging themselves out of a mess that they've done, they've created for themselves. And I hope that they'll eventually the battle. be the battle. be done with everything that they've they've done uh, to get Mass Effect Andromeda to actually be a good game. It it is going to be quite a shame if Mass Effect Andromeda is the nail in the coffin of the Mass Effect series, because a operatic, large scale. Fine. Uh, RPG set in space should exist in the video game industry and if it's not Mass Effect I don't know what it is Put this apple on your head. let's do this reporting for duty reporting for duty reporting for duty And now we'll just do this, 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 and attack. Of course, I don't have the one character that I would like that would give all of these guys divine shield, but doesn't matter. Inspire summon a hand one one. Silver hand recruit. For justice. I'm gonna go ahead and attack this. Then do this. Reporting that was probably a mistake. Reporting probably shouldn't have attacked there. Um, the only thing I can really blame Bioware for the is that the they battle. kind of cowtowed and oh. bent over backwards yeah, to a small minority of of people. Who, who are upset with the bad writing only, or 
way too much about one transgender character when there's just terrible bad writing in general in Mass Effect Andromeda. The whole game is full of it. So the fact that there's one transgender character that immediately like tells what they call their dead name, their, their name when they were the previous gender, uh, to this character they just randomly met it is silly, sure, but uh, but it's no worse than any of the other game uh, writing in the game. Uh, there is also the problem that there's way less uh, sexual options for male and male homosexual relationships in the game. They they're not even that that concerned about that. So it, the LGBT LGBTQI whatever group uh, they keep adding letters uh, ha has gone gone so far now at least that small group of people that were complaining about this that they they they're not even equally considering uh, like male on male homosexuality over transgender issues now transgender issues in that small group have surpassed even that in importance in their minds and it's it's just kind of silly like the whole thing's silly the story writing is terrible and by where they should apologize in general for all the bad story writing uh and they shouldn't have bent over backwards but i i again somebody's trying to make a controversy here that shouldn't have been made and uh, and uh, like what kind of drama is going on? um that one of the comments is just in general they they're not that they didn't like that the transgendered person immediately told what their name was and just kind of acted stupidly. So you, you kind of have this character that you could write down as a, a dumb character uh, releasing information that they normally wouldn't want to release because they went all the way across one galaxy to another to get away from people knowing is what the dialogue says. What their name used to be. And then in the exact next breath, they go, my name used to be this, which is, I mean, it's just terrible writing. But but there really is shouldn't be any controversy there. It's just bad writing. The controversy uh, the the controversy should stop right then and there. Let's see. I've got to kill this guy. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. So here we go. Let's see a new comment. Yeah, there's always those few people that think they need to make. Let's think over per petty stuff. Totally true. Unfortunately, the few people that are making a stink about it are also uh, often in the video game industry. No it, it's, it's really killing me. The fact that most of the video game industry that make games, that review games, are all in the exact same place in California. And they all just talk to each other over and over again. And it becomes this circle... Uh, circular opportunity of thinking that I don't want to use the word, but uh, so so more and more the the media in the video game industry is becoming the liberal media in the in industry, and it's pushing me personally to be way more conservative and distrust the media them way more than I've ever ever have before. Like I used to to believe them. 100% but having seen what the Wall Street Journal has made controversy trying to attack PewDiePie uh, attacking YouTube in general just making a lot of stories out of nothing to to destroy the new media which is me which is YouTube which is PewDiePie uh, they've they've really gone crazy with it and I don't want to get too political on this 
but they keep pushing me into being political too. Like I, I'm here just to talk about video games. I'm not here to talk about like gender equality and and things like that. Uh, it's time to go to casual. Let's let's get back to a Murloc deck and just start playing casual so we actually win. Uh, uh, casual standard or casual wild? I guess I have a better chance of winning casual standard. Uh, so, yeah, the Bioware apologizes about that. They also put out a patch to fix the eyes thing. It seems like the eye animations in particular were were intended to have been worked on more, and they put out the game too early. And that really doesn't fall on anybody but Bioware and their publisher. They got forced into releasing that game too early, and at some point in the future, maybe the game will be better. Yeah, it's not just gaming, it's the movie, it's the music industry, it's everybody that, that lives in, in that same area in California, pra practically. Uh, uh, there's a story here that's not even very much about, it's not about video games, but the... Most recent uh, Ghost in the Shell American live action remake with Scarlett Johansson. She's. Uh, the, that movie didn't make any money and has been very critically panned. And from what I hear, I haven't watched it myself, it, it probably deserves the panning. But I also kind of wonder if it's not the, the liberal media again panning the movie specifically because they feel like Scarlett Johansson was whitewashing a Japanese character. Uh, which, I don't really care at all. Uh, and the Japanese people don't care. There, there was a video on YouTube saying, we don't care. Like, if you want to have the big Hollywood actors and actresses in, in, a, in the American version of Ghost in the Shell, that's fine. We've got our anime from 30 years ago still. There's been many, many releases of that on many different formats. So you can go back and watch the original Ghost in the Shell. Uh, I kind of wish they had just done a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the movie. It would have been interesting to see how they got around some of the more difficult to to show elements because there is like a scene in the anime where you she rips her arms off like fighting a tank how that would be very interesting to see how you could cg i that like cgi that into the uh into a live action scene and and there is a lot of like mental headspace drama that is going on in there too so like I wonder, uh, uh, I wonder a lot if it, if the liberal media is panning that movie and that hurt its sales more than a fair amount. And then I also wonder, uh, they're also blaming fanboys of the original movie and saying that that's why it didn't work is because fanboys just love the anime too much and they refuse to go see the other one. And I'm, I'm like, well, you know what? I, I was an anime fan. I still have a lot of anime. I wouldn't really call myself an anime fan these days because I don't get around to watching it. And you're right on that. Fanboys were never going to like a live action version of, of any anime. They never have and they never will. They're always going to say the anime is better. If the anime is based on a manga, most of the time they're going to say the manga is better. That's just how it goes and you should have known that going in. And on the other thought, it is very possible that uh, that the the movie industry itself didn't really want to see it succeed because I don't think Hollywood, even though I know they just want to make money, I don't think they want to get in the business of of licensing a bunch of animes and and putting them out in theaters. And honestly, in half of the United States. I don't think we need animes even in 2017 airing in theaters around there because it's going to lead to like a lot of people protesting and being upset with animes because anime has always been about pushing the boundaries and I don't think half of the United States is ready to see it on, on, in their movie theaters. 
uh, there recently was a a story I heard where one drive-in movie theater specifically came out and said that they weren't going to show any movies with any sexual content at all or any uh, anything like that. So they 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 specifically are going from the mentality that they're going to censor what they air in their theater. Uh, we got a comment here. It's like, uh, we got Loki here. It's like people can't be happy. They have have to have their causes. They have to always be offended by something. What they don't realize, they are living in a country with free space and expression. I think it's always a thing said, but true. I haven't seen the new one. It's uh, unless the movies agreed. Yeah, you can combine the concept with all the easily offended. Yeah. Uh, virtual signaling, virtue signaling is is what it's been called recently, and sadly, it's a major issue too with with the YouTube advertising freakouts. The shows that I watch often are slightly offensive because they are also entertaining because of that on YouTube and those shows in particular while I'm not getting hurt I'm getting more views and more ad revenue than ever the shows that I would like to see stay on YouTube and be paid for their entertainment that they're putting on YouTube are getting heavily censored and on a blacklist because they use provocative keywords right now on YouTube they've got such a freak out system uh, that if you use any provocative words like uh, violence, murder, if you probably use the word Syria at all right now, you can't be monetized. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if even putting like the word Trump in a title would will just immediately get it flagged. Uh, one guy went from getting, I think, hundreds of dollars a day on his channel down to 37 cents a day uh, for ad revenue and specifically this guy uh, had advertisers who were specifically trying to put ads in front of his channel and Google YouTube all those companies that are the same company told them was saying no that he's on a blacklist we, we you can't advertise where you want to advertise so the freak out has gone so much from that and honestly people have always been freaking out this is the same what the same witch trials were uh back when that happened there were always virtual signaling this is the the inquisition there was always people that were freaking out the thing though that happened is we at, at for a while there in the United States at least knew not to listen to these type of people and give them a voice or give them any credibility and with the creation of the internet sadly we've given voice to everybody and forgotten that we're not we really shouldn't give credibility to everybody that the idea of being critical uh, certainly has, is kind of gone out the window lately. And a lot of this also comes down from the fact that we, we, we stupidly have trusted sources we shouldn't have trusted, like the news media, uh, to the point. Like, I used to watch... Yeah. CNN all the time and believe 100% what they said. Now that I've gotten, now that I've started seeing some of the things they're saying are slightly off or slightly colored to, to benefit themselves usually, uh, now I have to be a lot more critical when I see CNN. And we've kind of lost the number of uh, news outlets by far and they've all gotten merged into these corp giant corporations it used to be that a newspaper couldn't own more than 50 percent of the market in in a city now giant corporations own almost all the newspapers but i i'm getting away from the 
in video game news, and and now I'm kind of just ranting. So we've got a lot of. Uh, hmm. Things here, like they they really met Bioware though to get back to them needs to be really ambitious. Uh, Near Automata, here's here's a news story that's so late that it is is uh it has already changed. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Loki here saying that's why I don't talk talk to watch the news anymore. Yeah, I almost watch no news, like, like at all. Uh, the only thing there is I, I'm always kind of just thinking about when is the next big th event that it might be helpful to know, but it, it never happens, frankly. Uh, in retrospect, if I had just somehow not even heard, heard about 9-11 for a week, uh, it really wouldn't have changed anything because it took, it took uh, a week. It they were talking about 9/11 for months later, so none of it's any is worth knowing. Hmm. Yeah. Plus now you have Facebook and Twitter, so you can certainly get the news if something really happens. But moving on, near Automata has shipped over 1.5 million and. Uh, in shipments and digital sales, uh, 220,000 of those who are Steam sales, uh, and actually probably a lot more of those are Steam sales. So Near Automata is has been this resounding success. I need to quit clipping my my eraser pen in into the clip. That's probably annoying. Uh, it's been a resounding success for Platinum Games, and we are now two days away from whatever that Bayonetta announcement site that's counting down is. So, two days from now, Bayonetta may come out. Bayonetta One may come out for PC. Maybe not. Maybe it's all just going to be an April Fool's thing because it's this all started with an April Fool's joke, and I wouldn't be surprised if it just continues down that road. Uh, Reporting for duty. So, but with that resounding success, even if Bayonetta is an April Fool's Day joke, the hope doesn't immediately in there that someday we may see Bayonetta on PC. Um, moving on on the news, Parappa the Rapper Remastered came out. It runs very badly, which is a shame because I kind of would like to play that game at some some point in the future, but... He was designed for old TVs, and the timing is all off, and it has visual lag, lag and a lack of calibration options. So, honestly, I'll probably just watch somebody do a playthrough, like a perfect playthrough through, through Parappa the Rapper, which sucks. Uh, U.S. Immigration has uh, made changes to the H-1B visa eligibility. Uh, eligibility so it's it's very possible that some programmers including some video game programmers may not be able to get the h1b visas which means then the United States based companies will have to hire United States citizens to program video games which is probably a good thing honestly Right. When you just get down to it, the the only reason why you would want to bring in foreign workers for programming is because you you want to pay them less, and that that's all I ever see about it. Like that's that's the only way I can even look at this thing is that they're trying to exploit foreigners to pay them less while also bringing them into the United States so they don't have to have an overseas yeah. office. Uh, where they would have to pay pay taxes or, or or follow the laws there in that overseas uh, office. And for programming video games in particular, it seems kind of silly. Why not just have an overseas office if you want want this person to be a great programmer? 
Like, there's great programmers all over the world, and frankly, we have more than enough in the United States. The, th the problem with the video game industry is not that they can't find good programmers. The problem with video games that are buggy is almost 100% not the fact that the programmers making the game are bad. It's the fact that the main corporate interests are rushing the games out, they're not doing any quality assurances, uh, quality assurance testing, no QA, uh, beyond what they have to, and they're just saying it's good enough. And we've seen it over and over again with Dishonored 2 being a completely unfinished game. Bioware's uh, Mass Effect Andromeda being an unfinished game with problems. Even while I'm playing Borderlands 1, that game is slightly buggy, and that's a great game, and I still have to say it's... Uh, Say, say it's a little bit buggy. Um, so yeah, I, I, I hate to, to say America first here, but, but the video game industry doesn't benefit anything by exploiting its workers. It only gets worse and worse because of that. Hmm. Do I want to play this? Or do I want to do this? Let's see. Uh, Blizzard has won another lawsuit against a cheating website or a company called Bossland. It's pretty easy, I guess, to, to win these lawsuits. And I, I bet we see more and more of that happen. Uh, just as long as you can prove that at some level they they used your copyright no. copyrighted artwork uh, for something then you can get them for copyright infringement and put them out of business that way uh, Terraria has ditched a spin-off maker company after a troubled development uh, the spin-off I think is called Otherworld or the other game was called the other world uh, so I I don't know if Terraria is going to continue making that spin-off I think they are but they, they need either a new company or they're going to need to bring it in in-house when it should should have been in-house in the first place the Destiny 2 expansion pass DLC has, has already been leaked when De Destiny 2 isn't even out yet Zelda was patched and it's a slightly better running game. Uh, we have some not news segment here. Star Citizen and We We Happy Few both uh, got updated. Uh, and so they put out reports talking about their update. Uh, this is, I would say, not news because they're patch notes for unfinished games. And... Uh, Let's see, so, like, I really don't feel like I should bother to report for patch notes for unfinished games. And another not news thing we have here is that, is that Total War, the next Total War game is well underway of development, so yay. We know a game is under development now. That's not very helpful. Let's see, now what will be interesting is if this has a plus one plus one next time it changes or not. And let's see, I've got still a massive amount of news here. We're gonna end up, we're gonna end up going long today. Even without that extremely long break I did in the live stream. Uh, I'm trying to kind of hurry through this, but also I haven't gotten these victories that I need. Right now, look what I'm doing. I'm playing a ridiculous... Uh, I'm playing a ridiculous deck that's only designed around the idea of playing weapons for a quest. As if I'm going to win on this deck. See, 
this one. So, here's the trick I'm gonna try and do. Do this, do 14 damage right there. Pull this out, do 14 damage. This does have a plus one, plus one. Interesting. Even though it change, changes each turn. Let's see. Let's do this. Attack here. And then... Do this. Then do this. Then attack here. Then attack here. Then... Let's see. Attack here. Return this to your hand as a 6-6. Six, six. Ooh, I don't want to do that. Can't attack anymore. Yeah, I've lost. I've lost and we're running a little bit over anyways. We've got a lot of work to do. I'm just checking to see if anybody is commenting. Since I'm in busy mode, I don't know what that means in playing Hearthstone. So, I don't know if that stops people from popping up text. I know some streamers put their video right over the text, so people can't pop up text that way. But then I wouldn't be able to see the text either. So, I'm hoping busy, busy mode works exactly the way I think it works. We've got still a lot of work to do here. And this was more of a rant than any in an episode. Okay, that's it for this recording. But stay if you're watching live. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.